Okay, I'm just waiting for the ano, to be start. Okay. So, it's recording already. Pag narinig niyo yung sound na yan, okay, please remind, uh, tell me kasi um, the recording actually stopped kanina in my previous class. That's why I have to record it again. Okay? So, let's go now to method evaluation and quality control. So, when we were in when you were in quali, um, this is very important, okay? Some of this are actually been discussed to you before. So we'll be doing some of the review and some refinement and reinforcement of the things that you know already. So for this morning, we, are talk we will be talking about basic concepts, method evaluation, quality control, reference interval studies, and diagnostic efficiency. I hope you still remember quality control down to diagnostic efficiency because that was um, discussed during your quality lecture during um, second semester of your second year. In addition to that, um, basic concept is also been um, taught to you from quality and even in your biostatistics before. Your method of evaluation will be one important addition to this discussion. So please listen intently. But for this morning in particular, we will only be discussing basic concept. This basic concept will be the foundation for your method evaluation, for your quality control, for your reference interval study, for your diagnostic efficiency. You will not be able to accurately compute for the reference value or the reference interval of a particular analyte if you did not understand the basic concept. You will have a hard time understanding what the method evaluation is all about if you did not understand the basic concept. In short, you need to listen very carefully. Not because I don't have a quiz today, that doesn't mean you can just review during my time with the, ta with the other classes that will be coming in. Okay, you should have reviewed last night and not utilize my time to review for any of your upcoming quiz this afternoon. So having said that, let's have a quick story first. So take for example, there is a sick patient. Okay, um, I believe that most of you had a hard time appreciating quality management and quality control last, meeting, last semester because you hardly um realize the importance of it in the laboratory medicine so here now <clears throat> okay am i clear on your side daniel clear yung audio ko yes bro. okay so moving forward take for example there is a sick patient that came in into the hospital a sick patient with difficulty in breathing with fever with high blood pressure name it okay Signs and symptoms, that patient has it. So your doctor now, when when your patient go to the hospital, an attending physician will check their vitals, will check their signs and symptoms, but eventually will not make a conclusive a conclusive um, diagnosis without diagnostic examination. And those diagnostic examination is the part now where laboratory medicine comes in. But maybe one question that should be playing around your mind is that how sure are we that those laboratory results, that those laboratory tests are accurate, are precise and reliable, that after having those tests, I will be able to really identify and diagnose a patient of a particular disease. How sure are we na tama yun? How sure are we that that particular test will really be giving me the diagnosis for this patient? And that is now the time where quality management, where quality control comes in, okay? Because your quality control makes sure, okay, or let just go in general na lang muna, your quality assurance made, makes, makes sure that all your laboratory data are accurate, reliable, and that will give you a strong evidence in concluding for a particular diagnosis. In, in this particular part, okay, in this particular part, I would also want to emphasize that maybe some of you should be wondering, 
Sir, why is it? Okay, tanong ko lang ha in hematology. What is the reagent in what is the reagent used for the measurement of your hemoglobin? What is the reagent? Drabkin po ba? Drabkin. E correct. It is your drabkin reagent. And the method, to be exact, is your cyan met hemoglobin method. And the question you will be asking, Sir, why are we using cyan met hemoglobin? And that is another answer, okay, that will be given by your quality control, your quality assurance, to be more specific, your method selection. And all of those things will be covered in this topic. Method selection or method evaluation and quality control. So in a nutshell now, okay, in a nutshell now, um, this particular topic that we will be discussing is very important because this is our tool. This is our evidence. Sabihin na natin in the future, your patient, um, your one of your patient sued your laboratory because of giving you um because of the laboratory results that you released and that patient is claiming that that is erroneous you can win the case by showing your quality control charts you you can win by showing them your quality management protocol okay so bakit ganun sir because your quality management protocol and your QC result, the method evaluation, are your evidence that the tests that you are doing are reliable and accurate within the laboratory. Are we clear? So moving forward now, okay? So from the pre-analytic to analytic to post-analytic, quality is very important, okay? Quality is what sets the ordinary from the extraordinary. And if you want to be an ordinary, well, kapatid, nandito kami to remind you that you should be aiming to become an extraordinary person. And quality is very important. If our goal in the board exam is to top the board exam, okay? Ang goal, lagi kong ipapaalala sa inyo, hindi mabagsak kayo, kundi lagi kong ipapaalala sa inyo that we are doing this to top the board exam. Okay? And mind you, kagabi nga, nung naguhugas ako ng pinggan, sabi ko, how can I, how can I actually, motiv how can I actually, um, like, awaken you at times na parang you feel like giving up and you feel like ayaw nyo ng, parang tinatamad na kayo. And then I realized, just think about your future patients. Just think about um, treating thousand and million of people when you study hard. And of course, think about the hard work of your parents, which also would lead me to add my, uh, my another homily Now, hopefully this coming prelim, none of you will really cheat, okay? I, for the record, I've been with most of you since first year. I know performance from first year to third year. Yes, it is usual that there will be some students that will be having their awakening moment in the third year. But your quiz scores are also evident kapag nagsushoot up yan out of the blue. Okay? Out of the blue. So, may chikahan moment kami ng faculty. And if really nakapag-cope up yung ano, it will be consistent kasi across all ano. Okay? So, sir, ano na naman pong sinasabi mo? Diba? So, integrity po tayo ha pagdating sa exam this coming prelims. Again, um, do your parents a favor. Study hard. Time is really hard at this time. Money is not just being picked anywhere. You have friends who are not able to um, continue with their studies. And you are the few people who are really, really blessed to be able to continue. And I hope that you will be able to cherish that. Okay? My gosh, na record pa yung aking homily. Moving forward now, okay? So, sa lahat ng nanonood ng video na to, para sa inyong lahat yun. Okay? So, let's go now to the descriptive statistics. Are you still there? Let's go now to the descriptive statistics. 
So descriptive statistic as defined by Bishop is now the foundation for the monitoring of performance and quality control within the laboratory. Sir, why descriptive statistics? Descriptive statistics enable us to describe laboratory data patterns using your center, by using by describing their center, describing their spread or dispersion, and describing their shape, whether it is normally distributed or not normally distributed. So here, okay, the assessment now of the dispersion or the spread is a powerful tool because it now enables the laboratorians to predict the laboratory measurement, whether it is good or bad, whether it is acceptable or already unacceptable. Okay? So that is descriptive statistic, the foundation of monitoring performance and quality control. So let us go now to the first descriptive statistic that we are using to describe quality in the laboratory. And that is your measures of central tendency or your center, which are your mean, median, and your mode. Your mean, median, and mode are actually the most commonly used descriptor for your central tendency. Okay, for your central tendency. So you, we have your mean, we have your median, and we have your mode. So how different is the one from one from the other? Your mean is calculated by getting the sum of the total, getting the sum of all individual values and dividing that sum by the total number of data point. Your mean is also known as your average. Okay, your mean is also known as your average. And among those three. Your mean is the most commonly used. Your median, on the other hand, is a measure for your middle. By the way, I will not be teaching you how to compute mean, not teaching you how to compute median or mode, because I am assuming that you already know that. And if you do not know that, okay, if you do not know that, that is part of you being the student of reviewing the notes that you had in Biostat and in Quale before. Okay, so moving forward now, your median is gives you now the middle value of the data. If the data are odd, take for example, we have five data or seven values or nine values, it's easy to look for the median. But take for example, okay, I'll give you an example. What is the median of this? What is the median of this value? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What is the median? 4. The four, median four. is 4. Correct. The median is 4. But what if 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5? What is the median? 3, 4. 3. 3. What is the, what is the median if the numbers are 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, 6? 3.5. 3.5. Correct. So what are we trying to... So, I'm assuming na alam nyo nga kung paano mag-compute ng median. Okay? So I will save my voice for that. So mode, on the other hand... I wait lang. Median, by the way, your median are used when the data are skewed. What do we mean by data are skewed? Okay? So... Like for example, if you're if these are your value, it's e it's easy for you to use your mean. You can use your mean, but it's a different story if the value are already like this. Okay, if your value are already like this, okay, then this is the time now that you will be needing to make use. You you will be needing to use your median. Okay. So your median is being used if the value are skewed. Sir, when I say skewed, when I say skewed, when I say not normally distributed, when I say um, the shape is not Gaussian, all of this pertains to the same thing. 
that the value are skewed. So when I say skewed, meron siyang outliers. We have like um, 10, 20, 30, 40, and then the next value would be 1,000. So when you compute for the for when you compute for the mean, when you compute for the average, the average will be affected by the outlier. But if you make use of your median, your median will now be eradicating your outlier. Am I clear? So moving forward now, okay, that is for your median. Your mode, on the other hand, among the three, is there um is the is rarely used okay your mode is rarely used but your mode is described to be the most frequently appearing okay the most frequently appearing value in the data set okay the most frequently value in the data set so your mode is usually being used Your mode is usually being used if the data that we are trying to describe are bimodal or that it has two centers, okay? It has two centers. So please refer if you want to if you want to check how does it look like, you may actually go to figure 3.6. So we have there an example of the Gaussian. We have there an example of, wait lang, let me just try to share my... Let me just try to share my screen na lang. So we have an example there of your Gaussian, your normally distributed, your, your, sorry, para lang magising kayo, your skewed and your, your skewed and also your, ano, there. Can you see my screen right now? Hello? Yes. Oh, ayan. So on this part, okay, nakikita niyo tuloy kung paano ako mag-notes. So this one is your Gaussian curve, okay? Sorry ha, hindi, ayoko burahin eh. Um, pwede ko pa burahin pero kailangan ko yan. Notes ko to eh. So this is your your this is your normal distribution or your Gaussian distribution. You can use your mean here, okay? Am, am I clear? You can use your mean. If the value are now skewed, so when I say skewed, it is non-parametric. It is not normally distributed. Are we clear? Opo. Okay. So, and this is how a bimodal distribution look like. It has two centers. Clear? Opo. Okay. Yes, sir. So resuming now on my discussion, okay. We, we are using your mean, median mode depending on the need, okay? Hindi kung ano lang yung trip mo, yun yung gagamitin mo. It depends on the data, okay? So that is for the measures of center. Let's go now to the measure of spread. The measure of spread here this time, okay, for the measure of spread, this allow a laboratorian to assess the predictability of the laboratory test. Later on, we will be discussing linear regression. Yes, maaga-agang linear regression para po sa ating lahat. So, it represents the relationship of all data points from the mean. That is the function of your the function of your spread. It describes the distance of a particular point from the mean, okay? And in measuring the spread, we have four major uh, parameters. We have your range, your standard deviation, your coefficient of variation, and your standard deviation index. Maybe some of you are wondering, sir, nasan po si variance? Okay? Variance is not included here. Okay? Variance will just be under your standard deviation. So, moving forward now, okay, moving forward, um, when we are talking about range, range is the simplest expression. Because your range is simply the difference between the highest and the lowest data score um, in your data set. So yung pinakamataas at pinakamababa, subtract them, that is the range. Okay? And that is the simplest expression of your spread. So meaning to say, you're able now, kunare, your mean is 100 and your data is 60. Uh, your, your, the data that you gather is 60. So 100 minus 60, that is 40. So you can say that your value is 40 units away from your mean. Ganon, the range. 
when it comes to your standard deviation, on the other hand, it gives you now a clearer picture of the measure of dispersion. Okay? It is a measure of dispersion, your standard deviation. Dispersion of values from the mean. So it helps us describe the normal curve. Why it helps us describe the normal curve later on as we go to 1, 2, 3 SD, you would realize that what we are using to describe the distribution, the distance of a value from the mean is actually your SD. Your variance, on the other hand, is also known as your standard deviation squared. Okay, your standard deviation squared. So, if standard deviation is a measure of dispersion, your variance is a measure of your variability, okay? It is a measure of your variability. And it is determined, okay? It is det determined, sig it determined significant differences between data group. Remember, ANOVA, Analysis of Variance. So, we are using there your variance, okay? We are using there your variance. So please take note that when it comes to standard deviation, everybody look at your chat box. When we are talking about standard deviation, your precision and standard deviation are inversely proportional. So meaning to say, if the value are, if the value of my standard deviation is high, okay, the precision is low. And if the value of my standard deviation is low, the precision is high. Meaning to say, Tagalogin natin, let us say it in the vernacular. Kapag ang standard deviation mo mababa, ibig sabihin nun, yung values mo magkakalapit. And yun yung gusto natin kapag precision. Because precision is the closeness of one value from the other. Paano naman kapag mataas yung standard deviation mo? If your standard deviation is high, if your standard deviation is high, that only goes to show na ang distansya sa pagitan ng mga values mo ay malaki. That's why they are not precise. Okay? So take for example, for this particular one, okay? For this particular one, if your SD is high, your precision is low. What do we mean by that? P putting it into picture, this is how it looked like. Okay? This is how it looked like. Your value will be like this. These are your values. They are far from your mean. Far from your mean and far from one another. So the distance here, okay, the distance here, this is your SD. Okay? This is your SD. Are we clear? On the other hand, if your SD is low, meaning to say, okay, meaning to say the distance from one another is only small, the precision is high. Okay, so taking it into a drawing, this is how it looks like. So your data are all concentrated here. Okay, are we clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Closeness of the value to one another. Okay, closeness of your value to one another. So moving forward now, let me go back. Moving forward now, let me go back. So that is your standard deviation. On the other hand, we also have here your coefficient of variation, which is a percentile expression of your mean. And it is also known as the index of precision. And it is used to compare your standard deviation. And last but not the least is your standard deviation index, which is computed by finding the difference between the value of a data point and the mean all over or divided by the group's standard deviation. Okay? The group's standard deviation. So among those four, what is the most, what is the simplest? Your range. What is the most commonly used? Your standard deviation. What is the index of precision? Your coefficient of variation. Okay? So let's go now to shape. We will not be talking about circles, 
square, rectangle, or triangle, but we will be talking about the, the bell curve, the Gaussian curve, or the normal, the Gaussian distribution, which represents now a normally distributed data. So if your distribution is a Gaussian distribution, it is synonymous to normal distribution and to bell curve. Naiintindihan nyo pa ba ako? Hello? Yes, yes sir. Okay. So you're go when we are saying na Gaussian distribution siya, this is how it looks like. Okay? This is a Gaussian distribution. And a Gaussian distribution, sabi natin, is normally distributed. Meaning to say, your shape, why do we use your shape? We, all, we identify errors by statistical method, but there are actually statistical data, there are numbers that would seem like within normal control but is no longer in normal control. Remember your, your 1, 2S, your, four, your 2, 2S, your shift, your trend. If we're going only to base it in their value, we cannot identify an error. But if you plot it in your chart now and you see its distribution, you see the shape, that is now the time that you are able to identify a particular shift, a particular trend, in a particular error referencing it to the West Guard rules. Are we clear? So, kaya siya important. Are we clear? Yes, Opo. Sir. Okay. Opo. Okay. So, most of the things that I am saying here are terminologies. But the reason why I am still saying this because and I am emphasizing this because I want you guys to understand its significance. It's not just a term we need to memorize, but these are the terms that will actually be um, differentiating whether will actually distinguish rather if you will understand the lesson on the coming uh, on the coming parts of this chapter or not. Okay, so moving forward now, okay, the total area of your Gaussian curve, your Gaussian distribution or your normal distribution is 1 or in percent, that is 100%, okay, 100%. And here, we can, um, your, your Gaussian curve is subdivided into three distinct part. Your 1SD, your 2SD, and your 3SD, which I call the 68, 95, 99. Hindi po yan vital statistics ng sumasali sa isang pageant, kundi that is the, nor the normally dis the distribution in your Gaussian curve. So, 1SD means 68.3% are accepted. 95.4, 95 95.4% 95 is your 2SD, and your 3SD is 99.7%. So, what do we mean ba kasi by that 68%, that 95%, that, that 95%? Memorize ko na yan, sir, eh. 1SD is 68, 95, 99, 1, 2, 3SD. But what is its significance, okay? What is the significance? When we say 68%, okay, when we say 68%, meaning to say, if we're gonna do, um, subtract that to 100, the answer is 32%. So what is the 32? Kanina 68 lang. What is the relationship of the 32, sir? The 32% represent the error, mga pagkakamali na tinatanggap mo. Okay? Okay? So, take for example, you have, you have your jowa, okay? May pagkakamali siya. If you are a 1SD person, yung 32% of the time, tatanggapin mo. Pag umabot na yan ng 33%, aayawan mo na siya. Ganon yun. Okay? Well, you would say, okay siya, but in reality, okay, sometimes the things that you accept becomes your standard. Okay? The things that you accept becomes your standard. And in laboratory, if you keep on accepting errors, then I could say that you are your laboratory test are errors. And referencing it back to our storytelling a while back, we don't want errors in the laboratory. We want to be precise. We, don't, we want to be accurate in all the things that we are measuring in the laboratory. Okay? So that is the meaning of 32%. The 95% meaning to say there will be 5% chance 
that a person or but person humuhugot na there will be 5% chance that the laboratory results will be will be out of range there will be outliers and that 5% is okay you will be accepting that 5% for me this is a perfect this is a perfect scenario if that person really loves you he will not actually be making a lot of mistakes the 5% is an occasional mistake and that's fine okay in the laboratory we accept 95% confidence interval sir if i am i'm i am traumatized by errors in the laboratory i am traumatized with people betraying me i want to go 3 sd well you can that is 99.7% meaning to say there is only 3.3% or just let's just say 1% error that you will be accepting and if that happens you will be alone most of the time because there will be no people who will be perfect enough to reach the 3 sd same thing with laboratory methods there are yes there are methodologies that will reach the 3 sd actually um, i don't know if you still remember your six sigma pushes for the elimination of your error that's why we have your six sigma the total elimination of error but in reality okay in rea- um sooner or later laboratories will move through that okay i don't know if you still remember ad- um a- an analogy in the in in quali before that 90 95% confidence interval meant 5% error And that 5% error is a total of 500 planes crashing over 100, 500 planes crashing all over 100 planes that um that that flew. It also would mean um take for example um five people dying over 100 people who enter the hospital. And sometimes, de ba? We would say, oh, okay, five percent is just small. But if we put it in a larger scale, okay, when we put it in a larger scale, that five percent is also big enough, okay? That five percent is also big enough. But for the sake of discussion for this time, in the most in the laboratory, we are we are mostly using your plus minus two SD, which is ninety five percent confidence interval, allowing a total allowable error of five percent, okay? 5%. Pag more than 5%, we will be rejecting the method. Okay? And that is important as we go along. 68, 95, 99. People of the Philippines, are you still there? Are you still awake? Yes. Of yes, course. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So moving forward now. Oh, let me get... It's already 9.46. I need to finish this. Oh, let's move forward. So in comparative statistics, we can actually compare your mean and your standard deviation. We want to identify if the difference between the mean is significant. We use your t-test. If we want to um, determine if the significance, bit, if the difference between standard deviations of two groups are significant, what are we going to use? Your F test, okay. Your F test, F test and T test. T for mean, F for standard deviation. Are we clear? Yes, po. Okay. So hinga ng malalim, brace yourselves because we are entering your descriptive statistics and com and um descriptive statistic of groups of prepared observation. And here, this is actually used in comparison of method or your COM studies. Sir, what are COM studies? Or oh, going back kanina, why is it that we are using glucose oxidase instead of other tests? Why is it that we we are calling hexokinase as the reference method? So as we go along, when we go to your, your carbohydrate, your cholesterol, triglyceride, proteins, bilirubin you will be hearing me say there is a common method and there is a reference method sir what is the difference reference method is the one approved to have the highest highest accuracy kumbaga ito na yung trusted reliable subok at ano na yung, ano nun? subok sigurado sigur, subok at sigurado parang hindi yun yun <laughs> tried and tested subok 
at sigurado. Sige, yun na nga lang. Subok at sigurado. Okay? Th these are try and tested methods. Okay? Eh, sir, bakit po ako gagawa ng comparison of method? Take for example, in the coming years, you discovered or you developed a particular method of identifying SARS-CoV-2. Sabihin na lang natin ngayon, di ba? In COVID-19, you discovered a method. Oh, I can identify SARS-CoV-2 in just five seconds. Are you sure? Okay? That is the question of the people of the Philippines. Not just the Philippines, but the entire planet. Okay? That will be the question of the entire planet. And they will be asking you now to compare that to a method. And what method would that be? That is your reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction or your RT-PCR. So what I'm trying to say here is that in comparison of method, we are trying to compare the new method from the reference method. Why? That is for us to make sure that that me new method is comparable, if not better, from the reference method. Who, do who doesn't want that, di ba? An RT-PCR that would take minutes and hours re being replaced by a five-second method? People would die for that, okay? People would go for that. But you have to make sure first that that is comparable, that that is even better or comparable at the very least to the reference method. And how do we do that? We perform comparison of method studies. Are we clear? Are we clear? Yes. Okay. Take for example, I'll give you a, 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 a must, uh, an analogy. Take for example, you consider your dad to be an ideal man you consider your dad as an ideal person that you want to marry in the in the future you want to have the value the characteristic of your dad to be in the person that you are going to marry in the future also or your mom for the guys okay as for me i don't care because i'm not getting married so as for the for for if you want to get married, you will look for a person na comparable, if not better than my dad, not better than my mother. So how are you going to do that? You compare, okay? You compare that person to your dad. Nagigets niyo yung point ko, we are comparing the new person to the reference. Parang kunwari yung ano, yung, yung dati mong ex, whether you like it or not, minsan you will be comparing your present from your ex, aray. Diba? Kinukumpara ka. Diba? But you are here to say, I am a new method. I'm different. I am not just comparable to that. I am better than that. Okay? So, nagigas natin ngayon yung point when it comes to comparison of methods. Are you, are we connecting? Gets? Yeah. Are we connecting? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So, sana hindi lang yung hugot ko yung natatandaan. Okay? So, Moving forward now, our reference method, so pag-uusapan kasi natin ito, okay? Your reference method is on the x-axis. Your x-axis is your independent variable, also known as your what? Your x, other term for x-axis. Anyone? Other term for x-axis. Correct. That is your axi, okay? Axi means abscisa. That is your x, your your x axis. That is your independent variable. We also have your y axis. Okay. So before I move on, sabi natin yan. Your axis is where your your x axis or your abscisa is where the independent variable is. That is where your reference method is. Why? Hindi kasi ito yung inaaral nat. Hindi ito yung yung dependent. Okay? Kasi independent. <laughs> so, what about the y-axis? Other term for y-axis? Ordinate. Correct. It's your ordinate. Okay? Your y-axis, your ordinate, or your, uh, where you can see your dependent variable, which is your test method in this case. And did you know how we compare your reference from your new method? Anong statistical method yan? correlation and when we have correlation we have co we have your linear regression so kala ko sir tapos na ako sa linear regression wait there's more okay so linear regression um is used to represent the relationship between your reference method 
and your new method. So the correlation coefficient, so please read it on Bishop, but in your correlation coefficient, it measures the strength of the relationship between two methods. If it is positive, okay, if the correlation coefficient is positive, meaning to say they are positively um, related or they are directly proportional. If negative naman, para itong, parang ito yung kwento nung huli mong X, di ba? You're inversely proportional. Iba na yung direction na tinatahak ninyong dalawa. Or perhaps you're me that the coefficient of the correlation coefficient is zero, which has no relationship. Okay, so in um in comparing your your reference and your your new method, it's very important. Okay, it's very important to to know if they are positively related or inversely related. Why, sir? Because dito pa lang malalaman na natin kapag ba ang isang test ay comparable o hindi sa isang method sa isang reference method. Okay? And talking about linear regression, are you ready, guys? Your linear regression, okay, is a method of determining the relationship between the dependent variable, which is your y, and your independent variable, which is your x. Your y, which is your test method, your x, which is your reference method. And this is the formula. Sir, magko-compute ba kami? Hindi po. Okay? Hindi po. So sabi natin kanina, linear regression gives us the um, um, enables us to see the relationship between the reference method and the test method. And the question is that, sir, paano po kapag comparable and acceptable? And then meaning to say, we can make use of that new method in determining the disease. So example natin kanina, di ba? Dun sa 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 SARS-CoV-2, what if na-find na out natin na comparable, okay, parehas lang po sila ng performance, then we can use that. Nagigets nyo ako? So that is how we establish new new uh, new methods. Hindi yung naisip mo lang, gusto mo na itry agad. Hindi po siya ganun. You need to perform comparison of method studies. On the other hand, okay, on the other hand, moving forward now to to the possibility of difference. Paano po pag may pinagkaiba na? Si method, yung new method from the reference method. The difference between the reference and the test method, we call them your errors. And errors can be systematic or random. Okay? Your random errors and your systematic errors have a lot, has a lot um, of factors that play around. Okay? Let's go now to your random error first. Your random error, okay, let's go to the random error first, is present in all measurement and can be positive or negative. But typically, okay, both positive and negative errors are present most of the time, okay? They are present most of the time. Random errors can be a result of many factors like your instrument, your operator, your reagent, and some environmental variation. Guys, are you still there? Yes, sir. Uh, so here's the thing. I want you to unearth your Quile notes. Okay? I want you to unearth your Quile notes. Nandun po nakalagay yung tinasabi nating yung yung mga causes or factors that causes your random error. And I want you to study that as well. Okay? So those are the those are the the, the causes of your random error. So, your random error, sabi natin, random error are because of chances. Okay? Because of chances. Like, take for example, your pipetting. Minsan naman, okay magpipet. Minsan hindi. Okay? It might actually be just because of chances. So, your error now, okay, that random error can be present. But take for example, okay, I have 5%, um, there is a 5% error in the laboratory. There is a 5% error in the laboratory that is tolerable, allowable, as we say it, okay? Allowable, as we say it. On the other hand, we also have your systematic error. Your systematic error can be fur further classified into constant error and your proportional error. But let us first define what are systematic error. So systematic error influences observation consistently in one direction, either going high or going low. And this 
um, is being measured, okay, the systema systematic error are being measured by using your slope and your y-intercept. Sir, sounds familiar. Of course, sounds familiar because that is linear regression. Okay? That is linear regression. So going back now, your slope and your y-intercept provides you an estimate of the systematic error. Your systematic error, again, can be further classified into your constant error and your proportional error. This is the part now where I need your focus to be on me. Okay? Let's go now to your constant error. Constant error exists when there is a continual difference between the test method and the comparative, uh, the comparative method values regardless of their concentration. Okay? During the last discussion last week, some of the students hard to hard uh, na parang na confuse sila with this. But um, I'm here to tell you that stick on the definition. Okay? Stick on the definition. But the only way for me to further um, explain it is to actually use your linear regression formula later on, which we will be doing. So again, your systematic, your constant, okay, constant systematic error is being reflected by your y-intercept, okay, y-intercept, which leads me now to how I will going, how am I going to uh, show you the, uh, how am I going to show you the error? So, andyan pa ba kayo? Nakikita po yung screen? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Okay, we're first going to discuss your constant error. Your constant error, I want you to take note that this is always the difference. Pagkakaiba. Okay? So take for example, I have the reference method here. I have the test method or the new method. And then I have the error. Okay? Saktan natin yung mga sarili natin. Pumunta tayo sa timbang. Okay? Take for example, nagtimbang ako. Okay? Nagtimbang ako sa sa reference sa reference method muna tayo no. Nagtimbang ako sa reference method. Take for example, ang ang weight ko is 70. Nag-weight ulit take for example si Melea. Melea nung weight mo, mamaya masaktan kita eh. Kunar estimate lang to ah. Kunar ang ang weight ni Melea nasa 51. Okay? Tapos si Si Daphne, o oh medyo payat-payat si Daphne. Kunwari, yung weight ni Daphne nasa ano lang, 30. 30 lang, okay? And then si, si, de, tingnan natin, sino pa bang nandito? Take, take for example, si, si, si Teddy. Yung weight ni Teddy, sabi na natin, kunwari, nag-workout si Teddy, naging ano na lang, okay? Naging 41, okay? 41. That is their original, ano, original, original, ano, original, that is their weight according to the reference method. But when you try to use it in the new met on the new weighing scale, take for example, ang weight ko naging 75. Ang weight ni Melay naging 56. Ang weight ni Daphne naging 35. Ang weight ni ni Teddy naging 7 naging 46. So what I'm trying to say here is this. The error is the same. It is just 5 5 5 and 5. Meaning to say, the error is constant. Are we clear? Yes, yes, sir. What yes, do you mean you yes. don't understand kilograms? It was a joke, sir. I, I do. I was a joke. I thought, okay. Sorry, ha, serious ako. Kasi I need to explain this to you very well. Okay. So, moving forward, I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay. Kanina, ka pa, kanina pa kasi ito magulo, di ba? So, burahin ko ulit. Okay. Paulit-ulit tayo dito sa... Paulit-ulit ako dito sa ano eh. Kasi alam niyo ba, uh, every Tuesday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Thursday, from 7.30 to 12, dire-diretso tayong nagdadaldal. Okay. So, take for example, this is your reference method. Okay. This is your reference method. So take for example, um, I'll take the the formula here. Okay, I'll um, I'll focus more on the ano. I'll focus more on the y-intercept, which is your six. 
take for example, 6 daw yung y-intercept niya. If the reference here, okay, if the reference here is 1, the test will be what? The test will be 7. If this is 2, this is 8, okay? If this is 5, this is 11. If this is 15, then this is 21. The difference between the two, okay, if I'm going to compute the difference between the two, the difference remains 6, 6, 6, and 6. And that is what constant error is all about. Are you getting me, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Get, huh? Okay. Hold your horses. Let's go now to your proportional error. The proportional error became a problem last time because um, unlike, sabi ko kanina, di ba? that um, regardless of the regardless of the concentration regardless of the weight the error still remains five pa din naging 75 man naging iba man ta, uh, 75 milligrams per deciliter and then 80 milligrams per deciliter the difference remains five milligrams per deciliter are you getting me the difference the error is still the same are you getting me guys yes okay so, as for the proportional error, what is the proportional error naman? Proportional error, okay, on, in this part, proportional error is now also a, an error, a difference between the reference method and your comparative method. It's just that it is proportional to the analyte concentration. Meaning to say, okay, pakitandaan to ha, if the slope is 1, proportional error is present. If the slope is 1, the proportional error is present. In addition to that, okay, in addition to that, the error is proportional because it will increase with the analyte concentration, okay? It will increase with the analyte concentration. So, hopefully, you're still there, ha? Let me try to share my screen once again. Guys, laban, okay? If you don't, un yung constant error, bago ako mag-umpisa, klaro tayo sa constant error, clear po tayo sa constant error? Yes, Okay. So, linear regression tayo ha. Y is equal to mx plus b. This is your slope. This is your y-intercept. In the formula, the in the... Let me try if I can open my... Okay. Nakikita po. Nakasplit. Ay, hindi na nakita. Okay, hindi pala ako pwede mag-multitask kapag ano. Sorry. Okay. One moment. There, can you see? Ay, hindi nyo na pala kita yung screen ko. No? Mm -mm. There, can you see my screen now? Yes, possible. Ayan, okay. So, in, in the particular, um, in the particular uh, topic that we were talking about kanina, so let me just check. Okay, in this particular topic, the, the slope, okay, the slope is, 0 0.85, 0 0.89, and the um, y-intercept is 6. Okay? So, remember that. Uh, moving forward now, let's go to this part. Okay. On this part. So, M is equal to 0 0.68, and your B, which is your y-intercept, is equal to 6. Okay? So, take for example, I have data set here na 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. These are the measurement of my reference. These are my y. Okay? These are my y. Take for example, I am trying to predict if um, there will be proportional error. Obviously, there will be kasi merong 0.68 which is equivalent to approximately 1. Okay? So, sab sabayan nyo ako ha. So, 5, substitute nyo yung um, this is X pala, sorry. This is X. So, substitute niyo yung X ninyo sa M. Okay. Ay, sa X. So, let's try to compute. 5 times 0.68 plus 6, that is 9.4. Okay. 
Okay? 10 times 6. 10 times um, 6 point... <clears throat> 10 times 0. 0.68 plus 6 is, ano ba yan? Ayos sumama ng calculator ko. 10 times 0. 0.68. 12.8. 12. Tulungan nyo na lang ako. 12.8. 12.8. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. Oh, 15 times 0. 0.68 plus 6. 16.2. Tama? 12 times 0. 0.68 plus 6 is 19.6. 25 times 0. 0.68 plus 6 is 23. And if we're going to subtract, subtract ilan to? This is 4.4. This is 2.8. This is 1.2. This is ilan? 0. 0.4. 0. 0.4. And this is 2. So makikita nyo dito, ba? In this particular part, you cannot appreciate yung sinasabi ko na um, as the concentration increases, the error increases. Why? Why? I want you to I want you to realize that in this particular part, both the constant and proportional error are present. Okay? Both the proportional error are present. Let me take you into another story whereby I will go directly only to your proportional. Okay? Same thing. Y is equal to mx plus b. But this time, m will still be 0 0.68. But pag sinabi natin, there is no constant error, the b will be what? Zero. Sir, is that possible? Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, it's possible because according to Bishop, ayan, according to Bishop, we have here, we have here your Vlad, your Vlad Altman method. In this particular part, okay, there is only proportional error. Okay, there is only proportional error, and the constant error, there is no constant error if the y-intercept is zero. Okay, no error if the y-intercept is zero. Okay, so, meaning to say, zero daw yung, ano, zero daw yung ating y-intercept. So, if we're going to compute now, as the concentration increases as defined, what will now be, okay, what will now be the value of my errors? Okay, tignan ninyo to ha. Try to multiply it again by 0. 0.68 alone. 5 times 0. 0.68 is what? 5 times 0. 0.68 is ilan? 3.4. 3.4. 10 times 6.8, 0. 0.68 is 6.8. 6.8. Times 15, 10.2. 20 times 0. 0.68, that is 13.6. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 25 times 0. 0.68, that 17. is 17. Uh, let's now compute the difference, the error in this particular part, the proportional error. Ilan? Ilan siya? 5 is minus 3.4? 1.6. 1. 1.6. 1. 1. 1.6. This one, 10 minus 6.8? 3.2. 3.2. 15 minus 10.2? 4.8. 4.8. 20 times... 6.4. What about 25 minus 17? That is 8. eight. eight. You see it now? Nakita nyo, can you see the proportional error now? As the concentration increases, the error also increases. Did you get it? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we clear? Are we clear? Opo. Sir, sir question po. I'll go, Jericho. Um, Nag-exist lang po yung proportional error kapag hindi pag zero po yung constant error po. No. In this particular part, Mr. Bolaños, um, mas nakikita mo lang. Mas nakikita mo lang yung proportional error kapag wala, pag zero yung y-intercept. Kasi tingnan mo here, 
here kasi points sabi natin di ba pag 0.68 yung pag 1 yung slope meaning to say there is proportional error okay did you na gets ba ako sa part na yon yes sir yes po okay eto ha this is my my assumption in why they had to put in 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 writings na if the slope is 1 proportional error is present why Kasi, tignan mo yung ginawa natin. Tignan yung ginawa natin dito, guys, ha? The, the, the slope is 0 0.68, which is 1. Meaning to say, there is proportional error. But when we computed it alongside with the constant error, alongside with the uh, y-intercept, nakikita nyo ba na may... Uh, aminin ninyo, was there proportional here? Nakita nyo ba yung proportional? Wala, sir. Wala. Correct. Wala, hindi natin siya nakita. So, ang only basis natin for that is yung value ng slope. Are you getting me? Unlike, kaya ko, kaya ko parang dini-construct. Okay? Kaya ko dini-construct kasi when we, when the, when your y-intercept is zero, which is possible, okay, which is possible, mas nakikita natin yung definition ni proportional error. Are you getting me, guys? Yes. Okay. So, ang itsura natin, di ba? Sabi natin kapag linear regression, di ba may line na pa ganyan? So, meaning to say, okay, if the line is going upwards, meaning to say, ano yan, tawag dito, um, positively related sila. Kapag ganyan naman, di ba, pag pababa, okay, ibig sabihin, they are negatively, parang parayas lang. <laughs> Wait lang, natawa ako sa ginawa ko. Napansin nyo ba? Parang iisa lang din. Diba? Iniba ko lang yung, iniba ko lang yung, ano, yung position niya. Parang pag ganito pala. Ayan. So, ganyan yung, yung negatively, negatively correlated sila. Pagdating natin dito sa, ano, this is possible, this, pagdating natin sa, ano, pagdating natin sa, yung formula ko na y is equal to um, 0.68x, plus 0, ang line natin is like this. Why? Kasi, ito kasi, kunwari, um, ito yung ginagawa natin eh. Pag, cons pag may constant error, this is 5, okay, plus 5, okay, it becomes 10, plus 5, it becomes 15, it will increase. Nagigets nyo ako? Saan na nagigets? Ayun. Sir, But, question po. Ago. Every when po possible mag zero yung B. When? Kamo? Opo. Pa anong... In what instance? That is actually the very same question of O2 kanina. Gore and um, Gore and um, Gab. Si Gab. So, eto kasi siya. Did you know that linear regression, uh, when we are talking about linear regression, the one that I am doing kasi in this formula are already the prediction. Okay, I am predicting if um, if I give if I have a value of 80, what would be the what would be the what would be the like what would be the value, okay? Unlike here. Okay, let me just share my entire screen. Okay. Okay, how will I be able to get a, a constant, um, a value of my y-intercept as zero? As was Miss, um, is, that was Miss Andaya, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. If you're looking for an answer, like, kunwari, sasabihin ko, kapag ganito yung pipetting, if the pipetting is like this, if the machine is like this, if the like this is the like that, you will not get the answer from me that way. It's not a conditional na physical, kunwari, pag bilog ang buwan, when the value is um, when the value is like this or like that, wala tayong ganong basis to get a zero uh, value of your y-intercept. How are we going to get a value of y-intercept when we compute for the y-intercept, which is this one. In your linear regression, you have this formula for your li linear re your line your linear regression formula but you also have a formula for your slope and a formula for your a formula for your y intercept so meaning to say miss andaya take for example these are the values 
Okay? Ipagpalagay natin, okay, na this value on your right are the reference value and these are the, the value coming from the test. Okay? These are the value coming from the test. How will I be able to compute for their slope and their y-intercept? I will go through the entire formula of linear regression. Okay? And if I find out if, the, if overall the value of my slope is zero, then that's the time now, okay? That's the time now that I can say that there is no constant error. Are we here? Nasagot ko kami, Andaya? Yes, sir. Nag-guess mo yung, nag mo yung point ko? Ayan. And in, in, in the same manner, kunwari, yung ginagawa ko kasi kanina, um, everyone, what I was doing is already predicting the value. Like for example, pag 5 yung value, what would be the error? Just for the sake of you guys visualizing the error. Kasi kaha nung last time, when we were just explaining it according to linear regression, it was a hard time, to be honest. Even for me, I had a hard time explaining it. Okay? Kasi I can just simply say na if it's constant, it's independent of the concentration. So meaning to say, whatever the concentration is, is, is Okay, whatever the concentration is, consistent yung yung ano, yung difference, consistent yung error. Na gets niyo ako? So if you compare uh, take for example, if you compare Andaya to to Miss Armenta, if you compare if you compare the body organ, sabi na natin parehas nila ng body organ, di ba? If you compare one from the other, pare-parehas lang yung pagkakaiba. Okay, pag pare-parehas lang yung pagkakaiba. Unlike your proportional error, di ba? Like what my example was kanina, na as you increase as you actually measure higher concentration the chances of having a higher proportional error is also high kasi nga the higher the, the concentration the higher then the difference nagets niyo ako doon sa part, sa part na yon nagets niyo ba yeah. sir di po hindi okay one more time so Ang point ko lang dito, okay? So, yung question kasi ni, ni Mr. Andaya is is a very, a very valid question. But what I'm trying to say here, so meaning to say, hindi nyo naintindihan yung in-explain ko kanina ng constant at proportional error. Is that correct, Miss Alba? Sir, slight ano na lang po, explanation. In what part? Okay, in what part? Take me through your, dun sa iniisip mo. Saan banda magulo? So, my proportional error. Okay. Sa proportional pa rin talaga, Lord. Okay. Sige. Okay. Let me give you another example. Okay. Sabi natin kanina, ha? Okay. I'll, I'll read the definition of proportional error first. Sabi kay proportional error, sabi niya dito, that the it exists when the difference between the test method, yung bago, and the comparative method, the reference method, are proportional to the analyte. So what we what what do we mean by proportional? If the okay, I think ibig sabihin yan. Uh, we can say na proportional. Okay, when we say, when we say proportional as the concentration. Ay nakikita niyo ba yung screen ko? Ayan. So when we say proportional, define natin what is proportional. Pag sinabi natin proportional, parang ikaw to at yung jowa mo or yung best friend mo na lang, sabihin natin kung single ka. Kapag pumunta siya sa kanan, pupunta ka sa kanan. That is for vector. But when we say proportional in number, kapag tumaas siya ng 5 points, tataas ka din. Okay? So, never mind the, the value. Okay? If you go, if you increase, you will also increase. Okay? If you, if, a increases, B also increases. Are we clear? So what I'm trying to say here is that when concentration increases, okay, the error also increases. Anong example, sir? Bigyan ko na lang kayo ng bagong example. Yung 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay? Take for example, this is from the reference. Ito yung nag-measure ko na rin ng sugar, yung reference, ito yung na-measure niya sa unang patient, sa pangalawa, sa pangatlo, sa pang-apat. Nung ginamit naman natin yung test method, ang nangyari, okay, sabihin na natin na 
ang sige let's stick with ano guys ha let's stick with let's stick with um 0.68 okay 0.68 o ganun ulit 10 times 0.68 mga kapatid 10 times 0.68 guys i'm only predicting ha i'm only predicting the ano i'm on, in this particular part i'm only trying to predict ano yung value nung nung x so this is 0 0.68 this is x plus your 0 0 tayo nagigets so if i do that 10 minus 68 that is 6.8 Okay, patulong. 20 times 0.68, 13.6. 13.6. This is 20.4. 40 times 0.68, kasi malapit na mag-time. I need to go to the other class. 27.2. 7.2. 7.2. So we, if we try to subtract that, 10 minus 6.8, this is 3.2. 13.6 minus 20. This is 6.4. 6.4. This is 9.6. And this is 27. Tama ba? 40. 26.4 po. Minus 40 is... Ilan? Wait lang po. It's 12.4. Okay. 12. It's 12.4. 12.8, sir. At 12.8. Tama pa na. 12. Yeah, 12.8. 12.8. Okay, 12.8. So, okay, I want you to look now here. Okay, I want you to look eh, saan? I want you to look here. Okay? Nakikita? Nakikita nyo to? Okay? As the concentration increases, di ba tumata? Habang tumataas yung concentration, habang tumataas yung concentration, tumataas din yung error. Nagigets ako, yun yung proportional error. Ibig sabihin, habang tumataas or habang dumadami yung minimeasure mo, lalo ring dumadami yung chances ng error. Are you getting me now? Am I clear? Is Alba? Yes po. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, ganun yung, pro yung, yun yung ibig sabihin natin sa proportional. Habang tumataas, tumataas din yung error. Bakit? Tumataas yung difference nila. Okay? So, guys, pag narinig ako sa exam... Difference, error, the same. Are we clear? Na, na, Nagigets na po? Sir, so proportional error still exists when y intercept has a value. But mas well-defined po siya. Yes, Jericho. That's why, okay, in your book, and dito siya actually, in this particular area of your book, sinabi dito, Okay, yung mismong libro na yung pinapakita ko, di ba? Sabi niya dito, oh, that proportional error exists when the val the difference between the test concentrate, the test concent, the between, asan na ako? The method and the comparative method value are proportional to the val analyte concentration. The proportional error is present when the slope, okay? When the slope is 1, okay? Ba't ayaw magsulat ng ball pen ko? Hala, low ba't yung ball pen ko? Okay, so if the slope is 1, are you getting me now? Gets siya? So um, for me, ha, the reason why they have to say that the slope is, if the slope is 1, then that goes to show na there is a proportional error. Okay, kasi nga, hindi, di ba kanina nung nag-compute tayo, hindi nyo, hindi evident si, um, hindi evident si proportional error. Are, are we clear? Hello, are we clear, guys? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, po. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, moving on now. Okay, let's try to end this. Okay. I will try to, to end this now. So, last two slides. Three minutes. Okay. So, when we are using parametric, okay, pag parametric, okay, ito lang yung gusto kong tandaan nyo dito para mabilis. If it is not normally distributed, sir, nasan po si not normally distributed? When I say not normally distributed, meaning to say, na, um, ayan, not normally distributed, not normally distributed, meaning to say, sabi natin kanina, pag sinabi ni sir na not normally distributed, it's also synonymous to skewed. Okay? Kapag not, uh, normally distributed, if it is skewed, what you will be using are pa non-parametric tests. 
Are you getting me? Hello? Opo. Okay. Tapos, kapag naman normal um, normal distribution, Gaussian distribution, we are using your parametric test. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, actually, that's it. Thank you so much for listening. So, I'll just entertain a few more questions. I'll just end the, the recording. Yay, natapos yung recording.